Hey, everybody. Welcome to the American Songwriter Podcast Network. This is All Heart with Paul Cardall. Forbes magazine calls him one of the most listened to recording artists of our time, with more than 3 billion streams and 11 number one albums on top Billboard charts. With his podcast, Paul wants to shed light on unique celebrities and influencers who use their gifts to make the world a better place. Like you, his guests are all heart. Welcome to All Heart, I'm Paul Cardall. When I first moved to Nashville, I was introduced to country artist Ty Herndon. He's been Grammy nominated, he's won Dove Awards. I knew his number one song, What Matters Most. In fact, I recently went fishing with some friends. We put that song on and my buddy started singing every single word. People love Ty's music. Now in 2014, he made a bold decision in country music. He publicly came out as gay. There are people who pave the way for countless others, but by paving the way, they suffer. They get criticized. Ty is not immune to that. He's had a remarkable life, a remarkable journey, and I'm so excited to share his story with you today on All Heart with Paul Cardall. <laughs> it's okay for me to say this because it's me, but I've been a mess this year. It's getting better all the time. Ty, you're an artist. If, yeah. you, if, you, if you have a normal day, you're not doing it right. Well, none of us have had normal days. <laughs> I don't know any artist that actually has a normal day. They have good days and really low days. Yes, Mr. Halbig's been at my at my butt to you know, start get started writing this new record. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm almost afraid to. I said, if I start opening these kind of worms, <laughs> you well, might have therapy. I fortunately have an engineer who I feel like is a therapist because he he's so not judgmental, but he's like, what what's going on today in your head? So Ty, I want to go back into, you know, you grew up in Alabama. You lost your father. How old were you when you lost your father? I was 17. What was the impact of that on you? Did you have a good relationship with him? Um, I have a, a better relationship with him, you know, over the years after he's after he's been gone. Okay. Um, I just had no relationship with him. Uh, he was a great guy, and you know, he just uh, got married young and had kids young, and just he was from a family of twelve brothers and sisters. He was the baby. Okay. And then he's yeah. mother died when he was two, so oh he, wow, wow, he got tossed around a lot, but. He, had, he just had not a, not no idea how to how to receive or give love. Okay. And it's, it's interesting that he had two kids that we're just that's, we're all about that. We were, we were, he probably had no idea what to do with us. It's like, well, what is this hug thing? You know. <laughs> Isn't it interesting what a hug can do for a person? It is. Especially when you know, because I come from a family there. There's some hugging. There's not a lot of hugging. Yeah. My grandfather fought in the war, World War II. You know, you get a you get a side hug, but not the, <laughs> not the full love and acceptance embrace yeah. of of what we all need. The pat, um, yeah. <laughs> the pat is dismissal. <laughs> <laughs> so, was anyone in your family musical before you you know you started singing? Was my my grandmother had her own radio show WPRN in Alabama. She picked and picked her, her a mean black guitar. Uh, she went to heaven. Uh, with her, with her Martin guitar in her hand, actually. Uh, I don't, I, it'd be hard for me to put a, for us to put a Steinway in, in our hands for piano players, but I don't come with a piano player. You're, you're, you're a grand, you're a piano player. I'm, I'm a piano Pentecostal. I can play, play the hymn. <laughs> you know, and uh, the fact that in your, your, your bedroom is wonderful. So the whole world can see where Ty is uh, resting his head at night. Interestingly enough, i lived in small places in LA, Dallas, um, uh, and Nashville. And in this particular place, I had stuff in storage um, in several places. Everything is out of storage. I had time to do it. Right, right. <laughs> and went through, I decided that there's no reason for me to have uh, 15 country weeklies with one on the cover. So it's just like, I was keeping all this stuff 
What most people don't uh, necessarily think about is the fact that artists, we have our homes, but we're on the road a lot. So there's uh, no need for a lot of us to have extravagant homes. It's, it's, it's been weird to be home this much. Well, let's go back. Let's go back yeah. into the the late '80s and the '90s when you you know you're. I think you had your first hit in 1995. Mm -hmm. uh, you, was that, uh, you had your, you've got three number ones. You know, numerous top tens between 1995 and 2002. My story, Paul Cardall. It is. Um, we were, we were supposed to have the book coming this year, and that's been a long process. And the dude that helped me write the book, he said, "Man, this is like this is like the, this is like Oprah meets the Kardashians." <laughs> it's um, it's a crazy story, but by the grace of God, I'm you know I'm here. I'm still making music. I'm, this this will be my I think my sixteenth studio album we're about to launch into, uh -huh. and it's um. It's probably anybody that's going to do an album this year, a record, you know, it's, it's it seems it seems like there's pressure around it. It's, I, I don't know. I don't want to go write an album about about the pandemic. You know, I, I want to maybe write about how I got through some things. But um, but I, then I get all up in my head. So I, I, I love this time. It's, it's time to start writing for a record because you're like, thank goodness for good producers and good managers. Like, calm down, just uh, yeah. take a breath. Is it hard for you to go back and talk about that period of time? You know what, Paul? It wasn't before this. Um, I'm going. I'm digging deep. I'm doing some really cool therapy right now uh, with a, with a couple of great folks. And I'm I'm digging back into some stuff that that I probably didn't really take good care of. Uh, which is, you know, there's reasons that you kind of lose your Kool Aid. And I I'm a pretty cool guy, pretty level most of the time, and uh, during this during this time, I just I've had a, a back on the career stuff. I've had a lot of people, uh, managers, booking agents, record labels that just weaved in and out of there that uh, that I did not have great luck with. Uh, for me, this pandemic has happened. This is probably the fourth time, <laughs> and I have I have always been able to stand on my own two feet and you know say, okay, we're gonna get you know, we're gonna work we'll work hard. We'll, we'll focus on this and and. But there was nothing to there was nothing to focus on. It was just like we had we had my biggest year booked this year, uh, mm -hmm. probably in ten years. A lot of stuff going on now. This this breakdown wasn't about because this happened to poor poor me. It was. I mean, it happened. My friends are losing their homes. You know, it's it's, it's a uh, the music business is is needs a lot of love and it's prayer. Struggling. It's struggling. Um, it's struggling. And that's that's from that's all the arts and yeah but for me in particular i've done a lot of self-care work and just to, to be able to be solid and for the first time in my life i was like something snapped at me man i mean i was i was completely lost i was i was i was that kid in the corner just just not wanting to see you talk to you uh just completely everything i knew out the window and and I'm not a real big emotional person. I'm, 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 like, I'm like, you know, coffee, coffee commercials. I'll cry at that. But <laughs> I, I've learned to be solid about other things, you know. But I could not have a conversation with you about anything. And wow. uh, there, was a, there was a breakdown, a mental breakdown for me emotionally um, that I think I, over the years I've just swept a lot of things under the rug because I thought I had to be strong about it. And I, I never learned to be confrontational. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a good confrontational and there's a bad confrontational and I just avoided it at all. And you just, let's just move on. Fine. You can have that $25,000. Oh, fine. You owe me, you know, it's it just like, uh, I had a forgiveness knob that would turn all the way up. Yeah. And that's not healthy because you absorb all of that energy that you just hold on to. So, uh, this is the first time I've actually talked about this and I've, i talked, <laughs> I, had, I had a, I still have a little bit of a headache. But I had a migraine yesterday. Um, I'm learning to just, just take a breath, sit back and go, okay, you're okay. And life is going to happen. And, and like my friend Kristen Chin was said, we have to have uh, tambourines in the alleys of, of wherever we want to sing, you're going to sing. I don't know a world. Since I was six years old, I've been doing this for a living. So um, 
sometimes greatly, sometimes poorly, but it's, it's what I always had to run to. And, and now that I'm hearing other artists' stories that are friends of mine, like, you know, I'm not gonna name names, but a very famous artist did not leave her bedroom for four months. And another artist uh, never set foot outside the house and found out they didn't really know how to behave. They didn't really know how to be at home all that time. And, uh, and for me, I was already having some health issues and uh, from black mold of all things, it was in my, <laughs> my place I didn't know about. And so I went into isolation completely alone. I mean, Matt, Matt could, could come to the door, but um, I went into that three months in an 800 square foot condo in the Gulch alone. And I have alone issues. <laughs> I like, I'm social. I like a lot of people around and you know, Matt gets sick of it. <laughs> he, he, uh, now he's become more social. He's completely flipped. And, uh, and no one could get to me. You know, I, I finally was able to talk to uh, my therapist um, from my rehab stay at Cumberland Heights. And she reminded me of a lot of things. She reminded me that I, that I, that I was dealing with claustrophobia, which I thought I had kind of conquered that. She said, no, no. She goes, you're, you're, you're in the heart of it. You don't um, do well in an ISO booth. I don't, and I don't, I don't breathe well, and I, I, I don't, uh, been, all the Zoom stuff that was just, just happening at yeah. that time, I was like, I really don't want to see you right now, and I don't want to be seen. <laughs> right, and right. So I just completely lost my way, and I was safe, but up here I wasn't. And so, and during that time, uh, a good friend of ours killed himself. And Jeez. another, there was death happening and we couldn't even celebrate their lives. So that was, that was not helping. <laughs> that um, the thing that I was the best at was jumping in there and, 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 and being strong and solid uh, for others and for myself was gone. I mean, just, uh, just gone. And I thought, I thought, I got a lot of great friends, but I thought if I, I could, I almost wanted to turn off my phone. I was like, guys, I don't have any answers for you, but I love how, I, how loved I was. Yeah. At the time. And you, is this, you know, as an artist myself, you know, I struggle. I've got health issues. I've got PTSD. I've got all these things. And I've been dealing with this stuff. Do you think a lot of this is the cat and mouse game of the music industry and our personal lives interweaving the relationships we have and then constantly starting to, you know, we're, we're, we're fighting to have a voice yeah. in a sea of amazing voices. What I know now is this, I wish you to say I go to the road to work things out. What I know now is whatever was going on in my life, I would go to the road. It was, it was easy for me to run and not face, you know, if, if man are having a problem, you know, uh, or I'm going to be gone for two weeks, it'll fix itself. And, you know, I'll, I'll come home, I'll be missed. And, you know, just, just dissecting behavior. <clears throat> it's been very interesting and um, just trying to be well, because also just, <laughs> it's become a pretty big joke with my friends that uh, if we're going anywhere, we, that let's wait and see what's wrong with Ty this week. <laughs> so I, I've welcomed the humor because they're not wrong. It's been, it wasn't a cold. It was a tooth fall. It wasn't, it was an eye infection. It, it was a knee swollen. It, it just, just every week was something. And you know what it was? And now that I've learned to just calm down, stress it's not good. I've, I've, I've never been a person to completely stress out, but everything in your body just wants to stop working. You just get, and then add depression on top of that. And my father passed away from, uh, from some pretty severe depression. And I thought it skipped me because I was just like, I used to look at people and go, wait, they, 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 they have a pill for that, right? I mean, and, and I feel bad that I ever thought that because there was, there was no pill that was going to fix this. It was, it was nothing that was going to numb me out because I was already numb. And I couldn't find the, I couldn't find my, my number one guy in there. And 
and I can now talk about this without, without boozing, but I, I couldn't see God. I was like, where, where, where'd you go? You know, not only myself, but just what is this about? You know, and, um, and that's never happened to me before, ever. Even in my darkest moments, you know, it's just, there's been a strong connection there. Uh, but, man, I couldn't find it. And that was horrifying to me. And, and it's enough to make you, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to leave the earth. I'll say that right now. And the therapist asked, did you, did you want to commit suicide? I said, no, it was never about that. Yeah. It was about, I, I, don't, I don't know where to go to get answers at this point. And I don't know what the future looks like. And um, I just lost all this stuff. And I don't know if it's going to come back. You felt completely unsafe, abandoned yeah. by even the, the, you know, because we talk a lot about God on all heart. You, you know, the God that you love, that you grew up with, the God of grace that has so much mercy. Um, you felt even, even, you know, your partner, Matt, you, you felt totally alone, totally yeah. alone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, I, I had been, I realized this about myself now, even before this, I'd been, I'd been pushing him way out to sea. That's a, that's another conversation, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I was, I was beginning that thing that happens to guys my age where you start feeling really inadequate and you, you feel like, gosh, I've only got a certain amount of time to be impressive. You know, I've got to try harder, i got to work harder. And that was another thing, sitting in that condo, I just realized I, I was tired. I was just like, the, the race is just in, for, I, for my, Terry Clark and I were talking, she goes, she goes yeah. you and I kind of, from the 90s, we, we other than the big guys, we call them, uh, we're still, we're still staying consistent. You know, we're still, she goes, it's a lot of work. I said, tell me about it. And then add LGBTQ on top of that, uh, the foundation, and I'm so proud of all that. And you've, you've created, you know, the foundation for love and acceptance, it's the Ty Herndon's foundation for love and acceptance it's interesting the way you know you're talking and the different challenges you've had you know it seems like the people that are the strongest advocates for that type of thing are the ones <laughs> who are a special witness in a way to the challenges and the pain because i believe had you not experienced this pain and suffering you would not be able to understand the needs of others who are hurting and that's the irony the thick irony of being plucked yeah. and i don't know that it's like god just gives that to you but it's like you've been plucked ty because he knows yeah. and then obviously the devil <laughs> the devil the devil knows. cross miss corona this is the yeah. devil i go well, they said, you know, what's the scripture? The devil is abroad in the land. Yes. So, so. <laughs> but with the love and acceptance, the word acceptance, you know, you're talking about all these different challenges. And that's one thing, like for me, uh, that's what's hard to do is accept that I'm aging, accept that I'm, you know, can I still achieve this and this and this? Because you need it's like it's what leads us it's what drives us it's what because we've been told our whole lives oh you're so wonderful you so, love your music you're amazing <laughs> you know you're so wonderful yeah but uh then when the crowds are gone and when people are not telling you that it's difficult it, yeah you know it, with the challenges that I've, I've had in my life I, I grew up with a mom and a grandmother that I, be, I believe in myself, I, I, you know, I've, I've stumbled, and, but stumbling is a part of moving forward. And um, I've never run from a challenge ever. And it's, it's just my, my really personal stuff that, I've, that I'm having to dive into now that, why did I run from that? And what, yeah. and what's my, my fear around that? And it's, it's, been, that's, it's been exhausting, <laughs> but I'm glad to do the work because I'm grateful to have the opportunity to do the work. Talking about work, man, I'm so blessed to be able to sing on your album that's coming soon. It's in the new year now? 
Yeah, so February, February, uh, our song that we wrote with Joel, yes. Lin Lindsay, some kind of wonderful. We performed it. In fact, that was that was one of the things that you know we had a great experience. We went out and did Love Loud Festival. So cool! It was so uh, cool. A Love Loud Festival for those are, that aren't familiar it was started by Dan Reynolds and Tyler Glenn. Tyler is also on the record as well. That's awesome. Yeah, so so it's going to be exciting. You you and I have a song. It's a really happy song, some kind of wonderful. <laughs> it's, know, it's classic. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. And then with the with the uh, Tyler Glenn, who is also openly gay, we wrote yeah. this song called "I Know It Hurts." So it's the opposite. I know it hurts, and there's a line in there that says it's cold on the church floor cold on the church floor you know you talk Ooh. about you talk about god feeling like god has abandoned you and this is the emotion so many people struggling with their sexuality it's interesting uh, you say that I, I don't know that i felt abandoned i just couldn't i couldn't i couldn't find him uh, I felt a little more like he lost me <laughs> like there's so, there's so much going on right now you got you couldn't hold everybody you, you went know? off the radar yeah I just, there was you know it was it was there was a brokenness in me. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, man. I, I got, I was so angry. Yeah. It, all that stuff turned into anger eventually. And mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't even speak. I was just so, so angry. And I guess I had a lot of stuff to be angry about. It, it just needed to, like a bad zit needed to pop. <laughs> but I did, I, I, I got, I got through that. And, um, <laughs> I had a little, uh, I had a little, I had ended up in the emergency room last month. Just uh, I had to have a little surgery, and, uh, and I got to the emergency room at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, I was in so much pain that I guess I don't remember a lot of it. There was this this beautiful um, black nurse. She was she, she's just just amazing. She, <laughs> when it was all said and done, I was late in recovery. She she, she came and she goes. She said, "Baby," she goes, hey, "You know." We had a lot of folks coming here overnight. She goes, she goes, and I know you're in a lot of pain. She goes, but how's your relationship with God? I said, I said, well, I've been a little, I've been a little upset with him lately, but other than that, he's been with me my whole life. He's a pretty, pretty cool guy. She goes, well, we could tell. She goes, you, you were, you were, you had some real, not so nice things to say to him. <laughs> so evidently, I was letting God have it in the emergency room. Yeah. She said, well, I'm happy to hear that. She goes, I just want you to know that, that I was just going to come in here and tell you, just give you a, a hug from Jesus. And I said, I'll take it. <laughs> That's great. I don't even remember that. I was like, yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> so I did my amends. I got home. I was like, I'm sorry. You, you, it's your brat down here. I'm so sorry. You know, but, you know we, we're, only, we're, we're only built to be so strong. You know, we're, and I call this my Titanic moment. You know, it, is, I ha it, it was bound to happen. That you know, just I couldn't I couldn't stay afloat anymore. I just had to I had to break it down, and um, and I'm better now. And it's good to be on the other side of that. But I have yeah. I have a, the last thing in the world I want to do is ever have people worry about me because I yeah, feel like yeah. I did I did enough of that in the past. You know, but it's okay. I found who my friends were. I love the fact that when I was in Utah and I was driving up with some buddies to go fishing. <laughs> and I, I said, I gotta, I gotta reach out to this artist. And they said, who? I said, Ty Herndon. They're like, what? <laughs> and he broke into singing the entire song, um, What Matters Most. Yeah. And I, corre I corrected him. I said, you gotta do the new version. <laughs> um, and, and they could not believe that I, I had even been in the same room with you. So the impact, <laughs> the impact of your music, I mean, he knew every lick. And I, I, that's what's amazing is we don't always see the impact we're having and everything you're doing for the foundation for love and acceptance and everything, Ty. That's some good tunes out there, man. I, I know you have, and I would just say, we, Eric and I were talking about the concept for this record. I said, man, I know it's time for it all brand new original album. I said, but really want to do this idea of going back and have an album called The Missed Hits. Yeah. That I felt like never got their their moment. I love it. I love <laughs> it. 
this new song, uh, let's talk about Orphans of God. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a dove winning song by Joel Lindsay and um, it, uh, uh, Twyla, Twyla uh, uh, and it's just an incredible song. And I remember being at a party with you and hearing the song and going, oh, we got to do this. We got to do this. And so you have a Christmas album uh, yeah. that you've regenerated. Uh, 20 years, 20 years old, 20, okay. 25 years old. That was 20 wow. years old. Yeah. Wow. So you own the rights to that then. You've, you've got the, you were yeah. able to get that back. Yes. Okay. And so then you put on Orphans of God featuring your dear friend, uh, Kristen. Two dear North. <laughs> yeah, two dear friends. I'm on there. I'm on there. I'm playing the piano. I wrote a little piano part for it. Uh, it's a beautiful song. When did you first meet Kristen? Evidently, I met her and she remembered that I didn't. Um, you know, I, I got a few years that are missing up here, but she's a sharp worked, lady. She, she worked at Opryland, so did I. So we crossed each other's path a few times. But I was in New York doing a, um, I think it was press for the my coming out album. Is that the living in a moment? Oh no, gosh, but that's, that's this is uh, it wasn't hey, lots of hands so. of a working man. No, you had, you had to go way forward. 2004. Oh, 2004. 2004. Yeah. Lies, lies I told myself. 2013, with the album Lies, lies I Told, I told Myself, he found a new platform for bonding with fans. I wasn't out yet. I did that record prior to. November 2014. Yeah. yeah. Was when you came out. And uh, you got some wonderful support from Boston Globe, Rolling Stone, Entertainment Tonight. Because country, you don't think of country music and the LGBTQ community. And I remember watching the show Nashville and that one of the characters, Will, which probably was inspired by you. Totally. I, I talked with him quite a few times. They should have made him a, a, a much bigger star, but you pretty much, that was our favorite character. We loved Will. Well, that, that beer bottle thing that happened on stage, that, ha that actually happened to me. Oh, no kidding. Playing <laughs> clubs in Texas. Yeah. So um, you were the first, you were the first actually. Uh, um, were you terrified? I wasn't. Um, okay. At that point, it was, it was, it got to a point that it was like, I, I'm not doing anybody any favors by not just speaking my truth because I was living pretty much 100% authentically at that time but I had never said the words and it was and people go well, what's the big deal about coming out it's like well it, the big deal about coming out is that you you're you're stating the fact that you're gay that you're stating right. the fact, you're letting the world know who you are and it's quite, it's quite that simple but the hoopla uh, that happened around me was just simply because I was the first successful male country artist that would be that would, was coming out, and I had no idea that Billy Gilman was. Uh, I knew Billy was gay, but I had no idea that he was. He, he, we hold those secrets up to heaven because it's not not your business to tell. Right. He, evidently, he um, was posting a YouTube video the next day, and the news hit early about me. I woke up to two hundred and like two hundred sixty text messages. <laughs> On a, on, a, on a Saturday morning and what gay I said, I said Billy I can't thank you enough for coming I said my, that, my story was unique I said but all of a sudden there were two of us and it took on rocket fuel and it was yeah. it was everywhere yeah and the funny part was they were trying to get people to guess who the two people were and so <laughs> everybody starts wondering questioning asking yes I want to jump back over to Kristen but I I yeah, we'll jump, we're going to jump back to Kristen, but I think it's fascinating what she did. And uh, um, I think it's, you know, it always takes somebody to lead the way. And you've done such a great service for that community. And you, country music is so much better. My brave soldier, Shelly Wright, is actually the first to, to do it. And, yeah. uh, uh, and her journey was more difficult. Um, she's, but she's my mentor, my coach, my... <laughs> I couldn't have done this without her. That was yeah. to do it correctly. I was terrified. Was sitting down with 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 people. Mac Entertainment Tonight. I sat down with them with Michelle Turner, and her, uh, I, I knew I knew her, 
And she said, you need to take a breath. I said, dude, don't I? She goes, she goes, this is the moment, baby. She goes, this is, yeah. and, uh, and uh, once the conversation started, it was, it was, um, it was easy breezy. And um, Matt was, <laughs> he was over there, like hiding behind the camera. I'm like, he's over there. <laughs> yeah. Before we get to Kristen, when, when did you meet Matt? And you've been with Matt for quite some time. Yeah, 11 years. 11 um, years. We met through a mutual friend on Facebook. Uh-huh. And we, it was probably five years later that we, we found out that our mutual friends had the same name, but it was not the same person. Okay. <laughs> so it was fate, you know? Yeah. So, so otherwise, I reached out to you because you were a total stranger. <laughs> and, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, but you were, you were a cute total stranger. But. <laughs> yeah, Matt's a, Matt's a great guy. Um, so back to Kristen. You guys were working at the Opry, uh, and then you were in New York. And yes, she, she said, "I I know you," and you're like, uh. "You know, Shelly, I was I was actually had, I was I went to sit down and talk with Shelly. Shelly was before I came out. Okay. Uh, Shelly goes, "I'm going to a, a performance with Kristen Chenoweth tonight. Would you like to go?" I was like, "I love her." Yeah, I said, yeah. "I think I met her one time." She goes, "You did," and uh, went. She she did one. It was a benefit. Uh, can't remember the charity at this point, but I went backstage and there were all these Broadway stars and um, I was just kind of took my place in the corner. And, and she, in the, her country's voice, she's like, tired and I live and breathe. She comes running across the room and just jumps that Kristen style right up in my mm. arms. And, and I, I just loved meeting her and we chatted for a minute. And then my guitar player, about about 10 months later, I get my guitar player, one of my guitar players, um, Josh, Josh, just Josh and Eric. We were doing a show in Oklahoma. And he said, he goes, I need to ask a, ask a favor. And I said, okay. He said, oh, I'm dating this girl and, um, and she's, she's famous and we need a little extra security for tonight. She's going to come out to the show. And I just, it just, I stopped what I was doing. I was like, what did you say to me? I said, well, who is it? He said, well, I've been seeing Kristen Chenoweth for about six months. I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> well, it's we a got small her. world. We got her. He met her at a, a, a family wedding. Wow. It, yeah. And uh, I mean, they're going on two years now. They're strong. They're, yeah. you know, they're, it, it's, God did a good thing there. Josh is awesome. I love the Josh. fact that Kristen Chenoweth, who is a Broadway queen, <laughs> is elegant, graceful, and, you know, uh, in my hometown, they adore her. She just performed with the Tabernacle Choir. She did a lot of great work within Circle there. And here she is with Josh, this country boy. Under country and boy. That, yeah, he, and, and an amazing guitar player. And it just shows that she's still yeah. con country at heart. Just a tiny bit younger, and he's, he's a sexy man. So he, but he's, he has, I said, I said, Chris and I'm robbing the cradle too. So it's all good. <laughs> hey, my wife is, uh, you know, she's four or five years older than me. So oh, she just yeah. pl plucked me up, but I've been, you know, paying my dues every day. Yeah, still, trying to, still trying to win her over. You got it. So, so. I think they, you think you won them, them over, you absolutely did not. <laughs> <laughs> you, maybe you had one for the day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, Orphans of God is out. Uh, it's on the Christmas album. Um, the name of the Christmas album? Uh, it's it's regifted. Okay, so yeah, everybody obviously ask Alexa or Siri, whichever woman you're faithful to, <laughs> to to play Ty Herndon. What's your what's your advice to young Ty Herndon? Not to try to be everybody's friend. You know, because it's, they're definitely not your friend. Just, just, you know, just really spend a little bit of time in finding out who you're dealing with. And do some background checks. So, so I've, I've really gotten royally uh, gifted <laughs> uh, quite a few times. You have one of the biggest hearts and you give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And I think because of your faith and your love of Jesus, you try to see things through his eyes. And that's the challenge I think we run into in this difficult Ooh. world. 
because we want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. My wife, who, you know, Tina works on Wall Street. She's in New York, you know, she's tough. She comes into my little world out in Utah and she's like, you got to watch that person. You got to watch that person. <laughs> they want something. They don't want you. They want something, you know? Everybody always wants something. That's the, you know, this, that's the song title, that's for sure. Um, but, I, you know, I, what I, I've watched Christian Chenoweth work. I've watched you work. You know, there's a there's a, a a level of professionalism that you can you can maneuver things that you can actually say no. <laughs> I'm learning that as well. Uh, but I uh, uh, I I think, <laughs> Paul. I think, as far as I know, uh, if, as long as I'm on this earth, I'm going to be doing music. And I think probably I'm about to move into some of the best music of my life. I did with the orphans of God, man. I didn't. I, you know, this. You know, I delayed. I, I delayed your record because I couldn't. There was a disconnect that was happening from, you know, from it's here. That it was crazy. I, that had never happened to me before because I could. I could have a cold like I have right now, sinuses or whatever, and I could. I could sing through it. I went into the studio probably eight times to try to sing that thing, and it just. Eric and I were just scratching our heads, like, "What's wrong?" I said, "I don't know." And I don't, it's just, it's just, it's, it definitely wasn't the song. The song was just a pleasure to sing. It just, it, there was a texture that was there. Um, you know, I, I, like I've done every time with your song. I mean, I, I, I you know, I prayed up, I prayed up and I showed up. Um, but for me, um, I went back, what, what did it? I went back to the well. I went back to where I started uh, singing that, singing, that kind of singing contemporary Christian gospel hymns, you know, just there's such an emotional connection to me and God and the universe with that stuff. And I love this song. I've been wanting to sing it forever. And we were able to do a gorgeous arrangement of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just coming to Nashville, meeting you has opened my eyes tremendously. You, uh, some, without even, you know, great. We're, we're doing music together. That's fantastic. That's great. What we were born to do. <laughs> but, 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 you know, I believe everybody deserves a covenant relationship. Absolutely. And, and that there's no orphans of God. Uh, everyone is welcome to the table. And so I came in from a, you know, when I, Salt Lake's a pretty big town. Um, but I came in here like this and you just, I love it. I love what God did. I just went like, <laughs> And you know, it was your it was your love of God and your faith, and it was like, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine heaven without oh. without Ty and uh, all these amazing people. I don't want to come to think <laughs> God's put in my life. Like, like if I so thank you for doing that for me, um, and, and accepting me. So. You can't speak right now. You're make me cry. Wow. I love you, man. You're amazing. You have influenced so many people. You know, you plug, you keep plugging away, plugging away. Swimming, swimming, swimming. You know, it's a, it's a straight and narrow gate because we go through it one at a time. Yeah. And you are helping a lot of people one by one and it's turning into a sea of, so it's beautiful. And I, I, I will brag about you to everyone and uh and so so thank you so much for, for what you're I, doing man you're 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 so welcome man i my grandma said i, I, would, I would be that preacher and teacher one day and I, I said well i certainly have been able to do that um i'm going to be able to do it better now even better than before uh, i i got to share a video with you i just got yesterday uh, a good friend of mine, he, he's on MSNBC. His, his buddy had just downloaded the song. And I mean, man, he, he had struggled with his you know, success. And his, he was, he's a successful person on television now. And <laughs> that's, it hit him right in the heart, man. He, he, said, he said, I, he was bawling. He said, I needed this message today. He goes, and this is not a sad cry. Because this is, this is a happy cry this message was heard so loudly in me he said, and I was like, wow, you know, I, 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 uh, I have a relationship with 
with Kristen, like I do with you, with, with Shelly, right? Like I do, with, we talk about God, you know, and I, yeah. man, I was one day, probably a month before this pandemic thing hit, and I was, I was just, I was just listening to some, some, some old tunes that I grew up with, man, and the Holy Spirit was just all over me. And just, I mean, I got into a, a full blown, just, just worship, you know, just right by myself, you know, and, and, and uh, I turned the recorder on, and I, I mean, I was doing the ugly cry to Shelly and to Kristen. I was like, guys, if you want to, if you want to see, if you want to see, you wanna see Jesus, you want to see him glow, right here, it's, it's right here today. Yeah. And, <laughs> and um, I, I kept that video. I, I said, one day I'll post that. And I don't know that time, maybe now, who knows, but that moment, I realized now, um, some of the stuff I just can't talk about, man. I realize now that um, God was putting something in me. He loves you, man. Yeah, he was putting. He was. He was prepare, preparing me for for yeah. a big a big old lesson that that I was going to be able to. Uh, I was like, I don't want another lesson. No, 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 no. <laughs> Bye. I don't want another lesson. <laughs> well, it's like I said. You know, there's so many people hurting. Uh so many people hiding so many yeah. people who feel unworthy and yet um you know most of my audience are believers and if you're not maybe you will be but uh, you'll love this i just love it man I love this as well the, the uh, my other friend that works for uh, uh for et she mm -hmm. said she goes well she goes, I don't know if we're going to do a story or not around this. She goes, but I will tell you this. She goes, right before an election, right before so much going on in the world, you come with this song? <laughs> just out of the blue. She goes, it wasn't even a lot of hoopla around it. She just, you just said, here's, here's a song with Christian Chen with Paul Cardall. <laughs> yeah. And, and I said, why not? Well, you know, there was no right timing for it. I mean, sure, we could have had, you know, we could have set it up just to release it in the new year. But I was like, no, it's done. Just this. It, this is not going to be a song. This is going to take, make a huge splash right off the in the beginning. It's 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 gonna. It's it's a seed, and it's it's gonna grow. Yes, and, it's an anthem. It is yeah. a message. That's what I love about these types of projects. They're purpose led. Purpose led. They're purpose led. They so are. I have no idea. What they, the purpose is. The, well, the purpose of it is to. You know what the purpose is. Come no, on. I mean, it's, it's sometimes you, when you're purpose led, you're just being led to do something, and you you, you are you well, there's find out later, you know, why you're so led to do it. Yeah, and not the song, but it's purpose led from years back. Yeah, and then see Michael, then Michael Passons and Melissa Green from Avalon sing on the, yeah. the record as well. I mean, that was just you know, Michael's my good friend, and so is Melissa, but I didn't think they'd say yes because they both had good and bad experiences with Avalon. and. Mm -hmm. And Michael just was able to come out and tell his story. And I'm just, my friend is different. It's just like, I was like, wow, I'll, I've always loved you, but I really like you <laughs> right now. And he's, he's, he's in love and he's just being able to be authentically himself. But, yeah. um, and then ha having, it was full circle for him because it was kind of a forgiveness thing. It's just all hug. It was, this, is about a, this is about a moment, a song yeah. that, that you both are a part of. Yeah. And, one of my favorite moments when Kristen goes up into that uh, really high soprano Sandy Patty thing, but right there, right hanging right with us, Melissa Green. <laughs> so they're just swimming together, man. It's just, it's a, it's a beautiful moment. <laughs> it's epic. It sounds like there's almost like a choir there, the way that it's yeah. layered. It's it doubled them once. Yeah, and, you did a fantastic job. And I, I was like, okay, I'm gonna, what am I going to sing here? And I was like, I'm not going to sing here. This is, this is a moment that I can just kind of step back and go, wow you know cause she goes into her thing there and it's just and i love the fact that for the for the first time ever in my career i was like okay i'm about out here I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna go sit over here <laughs> amazing well the song is orphans of god everybody we are very proud of it as you can tell uh but it is a a song that i encourage you to listen to the message and then share it with those who, and God will put on your heart who yeah. needs to hear the song. I think it's everybody. All right, my brother. Thank you for having me on. All right, man. Have a great day. See you. Love you, man. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody, for listening to All Heart. Again, I'm Paul Cardall. Please subscribe to this podcast. Subscribe. And if you learned something and you were inspired today and you know somebody who will benefit, you know, because you're listening to it and you're going, you know, so-and-so would really benefit from listening to this. Tell them about the podcast. Share it with them. And then I have a free song I want to give you. This is a song that I have been, it's been requested of me for years. It's not on Apple Music. It's not on Spotify. You can't get it anywhere, but I made it available exclusively to those who subscribe to my newsletter on paulcardall.com. Go to my website, get the newsletter. Why? I give you great information before other people on social media receive it. And I like to give away more stuff. Go to paulcardall.com. Click on the podcast link. You'll see other episodes that we've had. Our guests have been amazing. Season two is going to be even more amazing. The guests coming on, incredible. So thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm Paul Cardall. Never forget how valuable you are. You are worthy. You are loved. You are welcome to my table because you are all heart. <laughs>